I'm LG Nolas from the Horse Race Advantage Company. Today I'll be talking about stakes races. This is the uh, video that follows the uh, allowance races and, uh, and the maiden races and the conditions. So this is the fourth one in a series of videos that we hope uh, will help you uh, understand some of the insights of handicapping and some of the information that we consider when we actually created our uh, ranking algorithm that we provide on our website horseraceadvantage.com. It takes some of the rigor and the pain for you to actually uh, understand some of the insights of the uh, finer or the finer points of handicapping. And uh, today we will be talking about stakes races, our you know third step up the ladder in the condition book. Let's talk about stakes races. In our first video, we talked about the condition book and the condition book index, where we listed actually the stakes races above the maiden races that we discussed in our second video and allowance races that are above maiden races that we addressed in our third video. Today in our fourth video we're actually talking about stakes races which are up the ladder in the condition book. The stakes races, there are two types, the non-graded stakes races and the graded stakes races. The non-graded stakes races have purses generally around $60,000, $70,000, and uh, sometimes the track may actually ride overnight stakes races to attract uh, more horses to his particular track, depending upon how much money that particular track has. Uh, the graded stakes races are grade 3 races, grade 2 races, and grade 1 races, with grade 1 races the, uh, the best race. Okay. Those uh, races are generally listed well in advance, and when you go to a track website, you will generally find the uh, stakes races, the great stakes races that they have planned for that particular meet in the future. Um, it identifies the uh, grade level, and it will also identify the purse level and uh, the conditions. In other words, you know how old the horse has to be, whether you're a colt or a filly. Um, but the important part here is that graded races, graded 3, 2, and 1, they are sometimes referred to as uh, black type races because if the horse wins uh, that particular race, they, they get a grade of black. And when you go to an auction, you will sometimes find at their uh, page that their, their name is actually bolded. In other words, that means that the horse is actually one a greatest stakes race. The purse is important because the purse is quite high and they can go all the way up to a million, two million, three million, five million, ten million. And when he uh, or she races outside the country, there's sometimes even a ten million and higher. So the graded race uh, races have high earnings. And when we look at the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont, for instance, there are qualifications that a horse has to have so much in earnings. And in order to get those earnings, you want to move your horse up into the greatest stakes race because that's where the biggest purses are. So um, the competition in stakes races and in uh, greatest stakes races especially is very tough. But you will also find that a lot of these horses are moved very quickly into these races uh, whenever uh, a trainer thinks that a horse is that good. And he's going to try getting his horses at that level as quick as possible because that way he's going to uh, get the earnings in order to qualify for the uh, races like the Kentucky Derby. Let's take a look at the uh, Condition Book Index uh, for Aqueduct, November 23rd through December the 4th. And let's see if we can find a stakes race. So here is the index uh, for two-year-olds, and we find here an overnight stakes race on December the 3rd, and a, a stakes race for New York Breads on December the 4th, and a stakes race on November 26th. Okay, similarly, you'll find uh, stakes races for three-year-olds and three-year-olds and upwards. 
Uh, this particular one is a handicap stakes race, meaning that the uh, track handicapper assigns a particular weight to each horse in order to uh, equalize the uh, competition. So in this particular case, uh, there's a short race on November 24th, meaning less than a mile on the dirt, and then there's a November 26th race on uh, on the dirt also. Let's take a quick look at the fillies. So here, similarly to uh, the uh, races for colds, we have races for fillies. And here we have an overnight stakes race for the fillies on December the 4th, a restricted stakes race on December the 4th, and a stakes race on November 26th for fillies 2 years old. Um, similarly, you have stakes races for 3 year olds and for fillies and mares 3 year olds and upwards. Um, there's a handicap stake race on December the 3rd and for uh, horses that want to run less than a mile and then there's a long race uh, on November 25th. Let's take a quick look at November the 25th. We're looking here at Aqueduct, the ninth race, which is a go for wand handicap stakes race. It's a grade 2 race with a purse of $150,000. And I'm, I'm using here the uh, daily racing form, past performance data. Um, it's a handicap race for fillies and mares, three-year-old and up. No nomination fee, supplemental nomination of $3,000, in addition to the entry fee, may be made up to time of entry. And if we look over here, there's 21 original nominations and one supplement. So uh, one trainer or owner wanted to actually race in this particular race and uh, was willing to pay the extra $3,000 to actually take a chance on actually getting some of the money out of the $150,000 that are awarded uh, to 60% uh, to the winner. 20% to 2nd, 10% to 3rd, 5% to 4th, and 3% to 5th, and 2% divided equally among remaining finishers. Note that the uh, nomination is closed on the 12th of November. So, uh, handicapping is actually very, uh, stakes races is very similar to the allowance races. Uh, here we look at the lifetime earnings, and the lifetime earnings is 194000 over 10 races, and so the average lifetime earnings is about 19,000, and um, when we look at uh, 2011, this particular horse was four times out of the four times that he ran, or she ran, in the money, and made 111,000, so four into 111,000 is over $25,000. So this horse actually stayed uh, in the same uh, level that she was before. This is a four-year-old filly, and uh, the sire is Tiz now, and his uh, stud fee actually is 75000 today, and this is a homebred, okay. Lovely Lil uh, has the Velasquez in the irons, uh, but Cornelia Velasquez has a 16% uh, in the money, and uh, the trainer is Michael Hushan, who uh, has uh, a 29% uh, in the money rate. This particular horse uh, ran on October 22nd at Belmont, seven furlongs, and uh, she ran in the Iroquois $125,000 stakes race and ran second with Ramon Dominguez. Notice there's a change in jockeys to Cornelio Velasquez. Ramon Dominguez is the leading uh, jockey at um, Aqueduct. Uh, notice that at that time she was running with 124 pounds and she's going to 115 pounds. So she has, uh, she's losing nine pounds actually, which is very good. Okay, she, in the last three races, she ran 83 rated race, uh, 83 by rated, 85, 83. So she's about 83 rated. Her, her highest by rating was 86, and so she is somewhat uh, in in uh, in form here. Um, when she ran on September 24th, she ran a six and a half furlong and she was in a grade stakes, grade two race. She's in the grade two race again today. And she ran third with Ramon Dominguez. So the question is, uh, this one was probably uh, a stakes race. 
which means that she dropped in class here and she came from third into second and this time she's going back into grade two right race right? so she's actually moving up in class she's also stretching in distance she's going from six and a half furlong into a mile okay so last time she she went off as a favorite so the question in this particular case is by changing jockeys and a drop in uh, weight is she uh, able to actually come in first. Now, uh, the last time out, she was in post position th three, came out of the gate fourth, and she uh, pretty much was a front runner. That's her running style over here. When she came in second, she lost a little bit in the stretch. Okay, so what is her running style really? You know, she seems to come uh, from behind or from the middle of the pack here and came in first. And here she can, she ran uh, wire to wire in a option claimer 25. So when you look at her um, class, she's actually been uh, increasing in class and so she's facing tougher competition. Let's take a quick look at the second horse here, Risky Raquel, who is also a Bay Philly, four years old. And she is by Limehouse. Limehouse uh, stands set for 6,500. And when we look at her lifetime earnings, she uh, ran nine times, and out of the nine times, uh, she came into the money seven times and made 179,000. So she made about $20,000 per race. And in 2011, she ran four times, and uh, out of the four times, she was four times in the money, and actually was three times uh, first. And in that uh, four times, she made 131,000. And so she made approximately uh, 25,000, and which is a little more than 20,000 over here. And what it tells you is that this horse is actually an improving horse. Okay, now when we take a look at Lopez, uh, Lopez um, has 21% uh, in the money, and uh, Harold Bond has a 20% in the money as a trainer. The last time out she ran in the Iroquois race, a 7 furlong, and she uh, obtained an 88 buyer rating and came in first with Castellano. Now notice that uh, this particular horse ran against Risky uh, Raquel, came in first, and then she, Lovely Little, that we just looked at, came in second. So these two horses ran against each other Notice that in this particular case, this particular horse is dropping uh, weight from 117 to 114. Okay. Now, this uh, horse also had a five furlong at Saratoga uh, and breezed one out of five in 101. And then uh, after the last race, there was three f uh, works that uh, this horse had. Four furlong at 52, six furlong at 116, and five furlongs at the trading track at Belmont, uh, and one. Um, she actually had a, uh, a bullet work, but since there were only three horses that actually ran or worked that particular day, she did not get a bullet. Okay. Now, she did have an 88 rated race here, and another 88 race here. Okay, so she, her uh, buyer ratings are actually a little faster than the first horse that we just finished uh, handicapping. Also notice that she came from an allowance 42,000 on winners of one. She went to an option and she won that race. She, her running style is uh, pretty close to the front from the middle pack out of close to the front. And then she ran into an optional claimer. And then she ran again in optional claimer and notice with Ramon Dominguez. Uh, she won by 10 lengths and uh, gained an 88 weight race. This was for a 6 furlong, and the next time out she won again uh, uh, in the uh, Iroquois stakes race and uh, was a 7 furlong. This time she's going to go into a mile, which is uh, 8 furlongs, so she's going to go one more furlong. So the question is, uh, will she be able to actually uh, do this extra furlong? and uh, with a different uh, jockey. So always pay attention to a change of jockeys. This particular jockey has never raced uh, on this horse. Notice. 
And so you do have to pay attention to that change in jockey, and you wonder why uh, Castellano or Ramon Dominguez did not stay with this particular horse. Now let's take a look at All Due Respect, number three horse. Now let's take a look at here. Um, Robbie Alvarado is the jockey here, and he has 19% uh, in the money. And the trainer is Richard Dutro at 27% in the money. Notice that this particular horse is a dark brown or bay or brown filly, four years old. Uh, she was purchased at the Yukala Breeder Sales in March of 2009 for 80000 The stud fee was 10000 for value plus. And so the confirmation is uh, probably fairly good. Uh, this particular horse had a lifetime earnings of uh, 334000 in 15 times, and so if you were to divide that into, uh, roughly speaking, okay, is about um, $20,000 uh, per race, and the highest buy rate is 104, okay. In 2011, she ran three times and uh, made 70000 uh, with a buy rating of 96, and her average thus is 35000 so she's actually an improving horse here because this one is about twenty, and this is thirty-five thousand. She's she is a better horse today than she was a year ago. Okay, so we take a look at uh, the uh, trainer here, previously trained by Nevin Michael, and uh, now this uh, horse is going to Richard Dutro. Also note so over here, uh, she was previously trained by Richard Dutro, who was a very good trainer at the time. And even before that, uh, Kathy Walsh was uh, training her. And um, this was probably Santa Anita, uh, or let's see. So, anyways, she um, uh, raced at Ocala, uh, 60,000. And then she went into the Latran uh, Stakes, a graded two handicap, uh, a graded two race, where she ran uh, third. And she actually came from the middle of the pack and came in first, and then she uh, gave in and ended up third with Castellano. Uh, notice the uh, change in jockey here from Castellano to Alvarado. Um, her on March 11, she ran a 96 rated race. In May 11, she ran an 88 rated rated race. Uh, we're now in November, November 25th. And so she hasn't really raced uh, for uh, approximately half a year. So you wonder if she is fit and ready to actually uh, race again today. Uh, her, um, her works uh, are uh, at the distance, five furlong, five furlong, six furlong, six furlong, six furlong. And then she had a quick uh, warm-up here at four furlongs on November 22 which is about three days prior to our race here. And she did pretty well here, you know. So she seems to have been uh, training for the one-mile distance. And if she's fit, she could actually uh, do it because I noticed that she had a 100-rated uh, race, but that was in December 2710 at Santa Anita, which is uh, almost a year ago, and it was an optional claimer, uh, no winners of two. Okay, she won uh, the Talamo, and uh, the question is, is she ready, is she fit to run at uh, this particular level again? Let's take a look at uh, Katie Nell, the fourth horse. She is also a brown filly, a dark brown or bay or brown filly, born in March. Uh, she was born, uh, purchased uh, for 175000 at the Keeneland September sale. And she is by Tisno, who stands today for $75,000. Uh, she was trained by Todd Pletcher, uh, who has, uh, who's the leading uh, trainer in the country and has 25% uh, in the money. Uh, the jockey is Nakatani. Notice that Nakatani has an 18% uh, in the money. But uh, that's a change of jockeys here. Uh, she ran in, on September 30th, she ran at Belmont in a mile in the dispute uh, stakes race. And she ran pretty much wire to wire with Johnny Velasquez. At, uh, and she ran off a two to one. Notice that she's uh, 
losing three pounds in her uh, weight. It's a handicap stakes race. Her uh, lifetime earnings were 13 divided into 210. It's about uh, 18, 17 thousand dollars, which is actually less than what we saw over there. Also notice that her highest buyer rating is uh, less than the three horse. And so we look here at 2011, where we have uh, five races, and four out of the five races she was in the money, and um, five into 88,000 is uh, less than 20,000. So she is actually not as uh, good as uh, the, the number three horse. Now, we do have to pay attention to Todd Fletcher because he does seem to be able to get his horses ready. And um, th the thing that uh, you should pay attention to here is um, on June 10th at Belmont, and she's back at Belmont, or I mean at Aqueduct, and she, she ran in a Mother Goose race. And uh, that's a, a graded one race, which is the highest type of graded race you can run in. And she ran in 84, and so at that time she was a three-year-old, and she ran uh, first, but she ran out of gas here with Desimo, another uh, very good jockey. And um, so then she she was dropped in class, to the grade, actually two classes here, and ran Saratoga, and she ran a graded three race, and then again she ran a graded two race. And you notice that she's dropping in class here, okay? And until over here, optional claim is 75,000, all winners of three, she actually wins the race. Okay, so uh, on January 5th, on June 15, she ran uh, first, wire to wire, and uh, in optional claim is 75. So at that level, we know that she can actually win. And today, she'll be running in a grade graded race stake, a great stakes race, and uh, so the question is, can she actually run at that? Um, but if we were to compare this one, now look over here, 81, 84, 91. What you're seeing here is you see an improving horse here, and what you're looking for is a horse that's actually uh, peaking uh, at the time that uh, he, she is going to be entered in a particular race. Uh, Johnny Velasquez is back on her again, um, but she's stepping up a class. She's staying, uh, I mean, she's, Johnny Velasquez is not going to be on her again, and the uh, distance is the same, but it's changing jockeys. So one would have to f uh, wonder why uh, Johnny Velasquez is not staying with this particular horse when he won with this horse with a 91 rated race, which was her highest rated race. Now let's take a look at uh, the number five horse, Indian Legend. It's a uh, dark bay or brown filly, four years old, and was purchased at the Fasic Tipton, uh, February 09, for 15000 The Cherokee Run Sire at 25000 So she was actually going for less than the stud fee, and that should say something. But uh, somebody bought her, and um, the uh, trainer is... Uh, Reese, Cynthia Reese, and only has an 11% uh, in the money. Now, when we look at the money over here, there's 294,000. Now, that's considerable, but when you start dividing that into 17, uh, that that's about you know less than $20,000 per race. And if you look at the uh, in 2011, there were eight races, and five times she was in the money. And eight into 222 is less than 30,000. So she's staying about the same level as she has been raising. <clears throat> now, when you take a look at this over here, um, she, the last time out she ran at uh, Philadelphia Park, six furlong, in Allowance Company. Okay, and she came in fourth with Arroyo on, in the Irons, and uh, Arroyo now goes to. Alan Garcia, who is uh, a better jockey, but the uh, class level, she is uh, moving up in class considerably, and she is going from a lesser track to a, a bigger track, and so therefore, 
uh, she's jumping up way in class, and the, the chances for the likelihood for her to actually come in is very low, uh, especially when one looks at the current buyer ratings, which are 74, 75, 79. So um, this one does not show anything that uh, would one consider. Let's take a look at the number six horse, Arena Alvira, a dark bay or brown filly, four years old also, who was purchased at the Ocala Breeder Sales in March of 2010 for $210,000. Now that's a significant amount, and she is by the sire, Ghost Zapper, uh, who stood at that time for $20,000. Uh, that means that this horse uh, physically uh, had good confirmation and looked the part uh, at that time. And so now when we take a look at the lifetime earnings, we will see that uh, in 12 times uh, she actually made 391000 with a high uh, buyer speed rating of 93. So when we take a look at that and we say 12 into, uh, say, approximately 360000 uh, that's $30,000, over $30,000 per race. And the current, um, in 2011, there was eight races. Out of the eight races, she was eight times in the money, and six times out of the eight times, she, was actually, she actually won. And so most of the money that she made for in her lifetime, she made this year. So this is a very hot horse. Uh, the... Uh, Jockey is Jose Lescano, who has a 17% uh, in the money and in 2011. And the trainer is Bill Mott, who has a 17% in the money. He's one of the leading trainers. And also notice that uh, on November 24th, which is now pretty recent here in 11, at Churchill Downs, she ran a mile and eight in a graded stakes race, graded two race. Okay, and one with uh, Al Alvarado. She went off as a favorite and had a speed rating of 90 and a buy rating at 90. Okay, the, um, she came from the middle of the pack and closed. And if you go one base back, November the 4th, at Aqueduct, she ran a 92 rated race, uh, buy rating, and she stayed pretty close to the pace here. And she uh, finished very strong here, and she came first by six lengths and had an uh, 87 speed rating and actually a higher buy rating, 92. Okay, there was a graded three race. So here she's going to a graded two race. She is staying at her uh, level. And so uh, she's going to a shorter race, which she can probably handle because she can come from the front, she's a front runner, and she can come from uh, just in the middle of the pack. So this is a, a horse that can actually win. Notice that Lascano um, raced her in on September the 4th at Saratoga and actually won with her. So he won here twice with her, and he's back on her, so he knows her. So this is a horse that uh, is very likely to actually beat the uh, first five horses that we take a look at. This concludes the uh, fourth video in a series of videos on handicapping and providing actually insight into handicapping and what goes on uh, at the racetrack and around the racetrack in order to actually enter a horse and uh, actually win a particular race. Uh, this particular video talked about stakes races, and there are two types of races, the uh, overnight stakes races that, and then the, the greatest stakes races. The greatest stakes races uh, provide the biggest uh, purses, and generally speaking, those are the races that uh, qualify, starts qualifying a horse to be entered into the big races, such as the Triple Crown races and the Breeders' Cup races that we will actually talk about uh, toward the end of this series of videos. So I hope you enjoyed this particular video, and uh, I look forward to uh, our next video that is going to be talking about the speed ratings.
Thank you. Thank you.